But this one's weird because the government bought it and then sold it to JP Morgan. At a, at a discount. Apparently. Yes. Yeah. So they basically, they took on, so what they did here is they said, hey. It's look, a transfer. It's quite literally a right. massive transfer of wealth. It's almost, it's almost the equivalent of saying, hey, look, I've got the money here. I'm going to buy something because I don't give a shit. It's not my money anyway. I'm going to buy something. I'm going to give it to you. You're going to run it. You go ahead and make all the profits and shit on it. And yeah. And just that's it. Like I don't care. I don't as long as as long as yeah. you keep going, that's all that I care. About. This one stinks to me. It, it, like there's some smelly smells, about this. It all smells. This you know what this feels like? This is like so the first one with the um uh, whatever that one uh, Silicon, Silicon Valley. Valley. Silicon Valley Bank. That felt like the sort of the test. Like they went, okay, here here goes a big bank. We're gonna see what happens. And nothing really happened. As far as like nobody balked the idea that the um the FDIC or whatever it was 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 gonna um insure all the accounts and stuff with fake money. Because well, actually the FDIC is it doesn't I mean the money they have would be technically legit because they actually it's a different entity. But anyways, well we're gonna insure it. So we're gonna do something we never did before. We're gonna insure it. And nobody balked it. Everybody went, mm, okay, cool. That, that's that's normal. Just like 2008, where they went, hey, we're just going to stimulus the government or stimulus these um, these companies. We're going to give a bunch of money um, and do this quantitative easing thing. And nobody balked it, right? I think this was a test. The first one was a test. And now this is sort of like proof of concept. This is like, okay, well, we, we got away with the one we now. We can do this. And then you're just seeing what they get away with at this point. Yeah. And... This should scare people because oh yeah, it should terrify people. This is this is the state coming in and saying, okay, um, we're gonna let something fail. Before it was like things are too big to fail, and this is a big fucking bank. This is not like small balls. No, no, no. I was like First Republic Bank is massive, it's hundreds of billions of dollars. This is a massive. massive bank. This would have been in two thousand eight. This would have been too big to fail, yeah. and suddenly it's not too big to fail. Suddenly it's no, no. We're gonna step in as the government. We're gonna buy it, and then we're gonna give it to our friends at. at um, why am I drawing blank? JP Morgan. JP Morgan. And they're going to run it. But we took the risk. But we didn't take the risk. Really, either you took the risk or no one took the risk. Because the, the money's fake anyway. Or it's your money. It's either your money or fake. Well, really, it's it's our money. It's all our money. Mm -hmm. It's people's money. Because realistically, if the money's printed anyway, somebody has to pay the money back. So either you're going to pay it back by inflation or devaluation of all of your assets and and money and savings and all that shit or the economy will collapse so either way yeah. like one way or the other people pay for it but the government doesn't sh doesn't give a shit they're the government is omnipotent in the way that they will just continue to exist no matter what they've bloated themselves in a way that realistically they're the ones too big to fail because nobody's gonna let the government fail, and oh, you're out already. Uh, Holy shit! Uh, and uh, I don't like. I said this before in other podcasts and stuff. I don't like to be a doomsday guy, but this I don't know where this kind of thing leads. Culminating to, to something big. Like it, it either is culminating to CDICs. Well, that probably is one thing for sure. Or it's culminating to a. A massive collapse in the economy, the U.S. economy, which would mean that now the reserve currency in the world would be a different currency, whether it's China, which would be China's pushing. China would be the one. I mean, like who's who's going to put who's going to really compete with China? Like it's I mean, they're they're situated right now to be the one. I mean, we already know that like Brazil is using them as a as a uh, reserve currency now because of their massive trading partner. So this is not good for anybody. Realistically, this is like, it's not good for your retirement savings. It's not good for your it's future. For anything. And I'm scared because I've got money invested. And even though we're in Canada, it's all, it's all tied. We're in a global economy at this point. Most of my investments, realistically, probably 50% is in US stuff or more. Maybe, I don't know, maybe about 50% is in US 
So if the U.S. economy tanked, there goes 50% of my money, my Canadian money. And whether my Canadian money is worth shit after that anyway, who knows? So it's it just seems like this uh, this push to uh, break the system. And for what reason? I don't know. Are they going to rebuild it with CDICs and things like that? Uh, or C CBICs, why do I keep saying? Uh, Central Bank. C Central Bank Digital Currency. CBDCs. Yes. That's, I've said it wrong 17 times, but I said it right this time. CBDCs. Um, so yeah, so if that might be the case, I don't know. But is this a case for crypto? I don't know. I'm not a big fan of crypto. I've said it a number of times. I haven't. I have crypto. I have some crypto. Not much, but I have probably 5,000 bucks worth of crypto coins. Um, but I don't, I mean, I don't see how it's, it's the, it's going to be the thing. I think we go right back to a barter system. At some point, yeah. I think when, when the dollar collapses and well, I mean, I think either they change something or it's going to eventually collapse and I'm surprised it hasn't by now that we go back to some kind of trade system, some kind of barter system. Yeah. I can do this for you. You can do that for me and we just trade it. Yeah. At some right. point. But I, I don't see how anybody in society would get away from CDDCs, C, CBDCs. If they choose to implement it, you don't. Because like you, you have to do something. Like I want I have to buy food. Mm -hmm. right? So uh, yeah, I mean, am I going to be the one that, that fights the good fight and then dies of starvation? Probably not. You know, I want to fight the good fight, but unless I've got unless I've got the backing of a grocery store, <laughs> you know, I mean, I don't know how to do it. So yeah. this should scare people. Um, not to end our podcast on a very scary note, but well, sometimes that happens. <laughs> Hopefully, the second Republic Bank doesn't. Let's <laughs> go.